as you can tell, someone else is here on the boat. All right, Cooley, Ooh. listen to him. He kapowied. <laughs> Welcome back to Sailing GBU. This week we have some provisioning to do. Not much though because we're not going to be going very far. And we're just going to get some few of the items that we don't want to miss out on from the Dominican because it's cheap. Those items would probably include, what do you think? Rum. Rum for course. sure. We're going to stock up on so much rum that we're going to be embarrassed leaving the checkout line. I won't be embarrassed. <laughs> and also some coffee. Coffee for sure, and then a few other items that we'll see when we get there. Yeah, coffee and rum, not only just because they're cheaper here, but also you know, there's a there's a pretty good tradition in the Dominican Republic with coffee and rum. They make some of the best in the world. I might even buy a cigar. I don't know. No, Am you're I not. A cigar? I'm not Anyways, a cigar. we're also going to be showing you how we live with no refrigeration. True. A few tips, tricks, and basically how we do it. Yeah, if you're an old broke dog like me and you ain't getting a refrigerator... <laughs> We'll show you how to live that cooler life. So even though the rum's pretty cheap here, we're buying a lot, or we're planning on buying a lot. So we're gonna go to a few different stores and we're gonna see which price is best for us. All right, so first up is the Mini Market Albel. We're gonna see what their rum prices are. All right, so at this, the Abel, the rum was 470 pesos, which breaks down to like, nine bucks for a 700 milliliter bottle. So we're gonna look for better wares than that. All right, so just because we're looking for the cheap stuff doesn't mean we're gonna give up on our tried and true, the corporate guys at the Fresca. We're gonna see how their prices match up. This one is the best one? This one's no good? Oh yeah, this is good. Well, maybe for like, so, yeah. this is like, you know, Johnny Red Label. Yeah. This one? This is, no, this one is Red Label, Red Label, Black Label. Black label. Oh. Okay guys, so we went to Fresco asking for prices, but he, the guy that owns it, right? He runs it, he's like the boss there. The boss saw yeah. us trying to make notes, writing down our best price, and he gave us a deal. What did he offer us? He basically, on the cheap rum, the cheap, cheap stuff, he gave us like a 10 bottle deal where basically we get one of the bottles for free. It's gonna be 10 bottles for 10 700 milliliter bottles for like roughly 50 bucks. So that's a pretty good deal, five bucks a bottle. You really can't beat that. And we drink it anyways, even though it's, he says it's the bottom, it's, it's not the, bad. Yeah, it's the low down dirty gut rot, but it's pour, not bad. pour enough Coca-Cola in there and you're good to go. So were you <laughs> proud of my wheeling and dealing skills? Wheeling and dealing all around the Dominican. Uh, Okay, so that place was super loud. That's our third and final place. And he was trying to make me some deals on the little bottles. I was a little bit interested in them, but for the same rum, same size bottle at the Fresca, this guy's price came in at about 50 pesos more, which is about a dollar more per bottle. So, looks like the big winner is the Fresca. We're gonna be headed that way now to make our purchase. The best part of getting our liquor and our food items at the Fresco is that they deliver it down to the dock for us so we don't even have to carry all hundreds of our bottles of liquor. All right, so we made it back to the boat with our goodies. Now it's time to show you what we picked up. We picked up some powdered milk because this is our favorite brand. We heard from a lot of cruisers before when we planned on going to the Bahamas for provisioning that this was the best kind and we finally found it here in the Dominican. So we're stocking up on this. We also got some rum and some coffee. 
This was actually a pretty sobering experience for me as a cruiser. We have a provisioning video before where we really stocked up on food and minerals, vitamins, proteins, things that are going to help you live. And now we realized after almost a year of cruising that we're full-blown degenerate pirates. We go out and do a whole provision where all we get is coffee That's and That's not true. It's and only because we're just going a couple days away to Puerto Rico. We're just stocking at what we wanted from the Dominican and we might not see. I don't know. I think we look pretty, pretty suspect. Here. Anyways, coffee and rum is what we got. Now let's get into our cooler tips and tricks. Since you know with our channel, we don't use refrigeration. There's a couple tips and tricks that we think will go a long way. When we first started, we were really nervous about like what food you had to keep and the refrigerator and growing up in the US, you know, you're just used to that fridge and you're scared of anything that's not refrigerated. So with our channel, everybody knows we have a cooler instead of a refrigerator. Come on, let we... me talk about it. Let me tell them. Anyway. We think there are some benefits to having a cooler instead of a refrigeration. Boy, why are you and trying we... to silence me? Let me talk! Oh, this guy's annoying. <sighs> so, as you can tell, someone else is here on the boat yeah, with us. It's me, Cooler! And they think they're the authority on everything cooler related. They think they know more about coolers than us. And... I do! Alright! We're gonna go ahead and let him take over. Yeah. He's gonna tell you some cool tips and tricks about cooler stuff. Hey, it's me, Coole. I'm here to teach you all about coolers. Number one, coolers are the best. I'm the best cooler. Coolers are better in every single way possible. All right, Coolie. Mm -hmm. That's enough. Mm -hmm. Let's get on to the types. Okay, so there's many types of coolers. You can go from a very cheap cooler to a very expensive cooler. And I'll say, if you're gonna live the cruising life, get off that wallet. Don't buy the cheapie. <laughs> get an expensive one. Get a good insulated one. There's a lot of different brands. So once you get a cooler, there's a few things that make cruising life easier with a cooler. First, you can start off with getting a simple spice rack to put at the bottom of the cooler. You can get one off Amazon. I'll link some below if you want to check them out. Or you can make your own. But that basically lets when the ice melts, all your food doesn't go soaking wet into the deep water. So our cooler came with a rack. If yours didn't come with a rack, there is racks at the Dollar Tree or also on Amazon as always. I'll see if I can find some of those on Amazon to link down below. But ours came with a rack. It's a good... It's good to have a rack so you can put it on top and you can put things like cheese, butter, vegetables that are going to go bad if you don't put it in the cooler. Things that you really just want to hold on top. I bet y'all thought Kristen was the only one on this boat with a nice rack. <laughs> Coolie. Why are you talking about Kristen like that? The next most important thing, other than having a sweet rack, is having somewhere to put your meat. You know, if you got a lot of meat, you want somewhere to put it. But you want to put your meat inside safely. That's one thing that's always been very important. So what we do is we use a couple of different containers. I know we usually try to be uh, frugal on this channel, but we paid for a really expensive Tupperware. This is like the Rubbermaid real deal. We probably paid like 25, 30 bucks just for this well, one thing. I wouldn't say that. It was real expensive. <laughs> but we bought a really nice one, and we also went to the old Dollar Tree, and we bought this cheap one. This one was a dollar, this one was 20, and they both do the same job for me. This one's good for like leftovers, that's what we normally use it for, so I'll talk about this, the efficacy of one like this, and the reason that we love them. And they're only a dollar. So this, if you cut up the chicken, will hold about two raw chickens, it'll hold about nine lobster tails, it'll hold two groupers and a hogfish if it's cleaned. So you can put a lot of meat, probably a week's worth of meat in here, and if you get ice, the ice will last about four or five days as well. But an added benefit to this is you can, when your ice starts to melt, you can set it down in your ice and because it's so tall, you can use it as a rack to keep other things out from the ice and out from the water. And it also keeps your ice really clean, so you can use your ice for pina coladas and things like that. 
So after you get your containers and everything ready, now it's deciding on what food goes in the cooler. Now coming from America, we put everything in the refrigerator from condiments to vegetables. After living on a boat without refrigeration, I've learned that you don't need to put all those things in the cooler. For example, mayonnaise. Now I know a lot of people in the comments are gonna uproar about this because I've seen it at restaurants that I used to serve about of us not keeping the mayonnaise in the refrigerator, but you don't need to. It actually stays fine all on its own. I wouldn't keep it in there next to the sun or anything. Put it in a nice cooler region of your boat in the shade, I would say, and it should stay well. Ketchup also, we don't put that in the cooler. Mustard, we don't put in there. A lot of times vegetables, even though they were refrigerated before at the store, we still keep them out. We don't put them in. I just check them every day to see if they're gonna about to go bad. And if we're not gonna eat them that night, I just put them in the cooler there. So it keeps a lot of room in there because you have limited space once you have a cooler. And then also a block of cheese. I know that sounds crazy, but you can take like a block of cheddar cheese, keep it down by your bilge area maybe, or like in a deep compartment in your boat, and it will last for quite a long time. I would say at least two weeks. And one she forgot too, butter. You can leave the butter out and it's all good. As everybody long as it knows don't you can leave butter out. No, everybody don't know that. <laughs> I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, but it'll melt on the boat if you don't have air conditioning. Oh, and snap. then you'll have a puddle of grease. What about margarine? Don't listen to him. <laughs> You're going to listen to him talk about you don't got to put mayonnaise in coolie? Remember one thing. That boy had worms. So <laughs> put that mayonnaise in coolie right now. Yeah, whatever. I don't care what Cooley says about me having worms. It wasn't from the mayonnaise. Anyway, so as you can tell, Cooley can be a little bit cantankerous at times. He can be hard to deal with. So what's going to keep your Cooley cool is ice. If you're on an island that doesn't have commercial ice, it's probably so small that they'll trade you a fish for a frozen gallon of ice or something like that. Way down at the bottom of the Crooked Islands, we did this and we also did this in my iguana. So if you have a gallon of water with you they'll usually throw it in their freezer and you can pick it up the next day or sometimes they have frozen bottles as well and what's really good about that is you'll have cold water when you're ready to drink it and the big chunks of frozen ice work really really well i remember the best time that i had a giant block of ice for about ten dollars i was in what was little the farmer yeah the little farmer's key in the bahamas they gave me like a five gallon bucket of frozen ice. So that lasted like eight days, I think, in the cooler that we have. So they'll work with you. You can find ice. They may not have bags and things like that, but you'll always be able to find it. So that's how you keep your coolie cool. All right, guys. So I hope you got some tips and some tricks to help you better understand how you can live without refrigeration. We would like a refrigerator, hopefully upgrade eventually. But for now, we're actually doing fine with it. Yeah, it's a good cheap way to get out of there, you know, and it's also even if you do have refrigeration It's a really good backup because we've met a lot of people that have had troubles with their fridges out here and uh, You know the marine environment is a tough one for compressors and things like that. So we like the cooler it works really well for us, but Maybe I think having the fridge cooler combo would work the best. Also, I hope you enjoyed learning how to shop for rum <laughs> In the Dominican Republic and find the cheap stuff or at least find the bargain buys find those bulk payments um, we were doing some provisioning to get out of here today Luperon is not letting us go easily yeah we're having a few mishaps things are starting to break on us as we decide to plan to leave this morning didn't go so fly for us you know I try to make coffee propane's out okay no big deal start doing some dishes you know water pump Caboosed. Caboosed. <laughs> Kabust. Whatever. What is the word? Kablamo? Kaput? Com combusted? Bus com D it didn't combust. <laughs> it kapowied. It kapowied out. Then what happened? Oh, and then we tried to check out our chart plotter and we put our little maps. We have a very cheap Garmin chart plotter where you put a little SD card in for your maps and that whole thing like rotted out it's not rotted but it's i got some water in there i yeah. guess we didn't buy the case we just re-upped though and we're gonna buy a case 
so, yeah, so we're we, gonna get a new one for now we are looking to upgrade so let us know some brands that you think are the best down below email some brands say help help your friends out you know throw 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 sale and gbu a little bone over here <laughs> but yeah so we're gonna get those things all cleaned up and we're gonna get out there sooner than later yeah and if you like coolie if you like the Beauty and the Beast animated objects on the boat. We had that spell casted on our boat because she's the beauty and I'm the beast. So we have a lot of uh, talking fixtures in our boat. <laughs> if you liked Cooley, if you want to meet some of his friends, let us know in the comments below. And, uh, you know, maybe we can introduce you guys someday. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe and give us a share. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, it was a pleasure to meet you, and I hope you like meeting me too. If you love Cooley and you want to see me again, let them know. Look how scared Bear is back there.